Welcome back to Let's Play Endless Space 2, Series 10, Episode number 34. I'm JC Proton, and we're picking up at turn 72. We're playing a standard faction of the United Empire on Endless Difficulty in a normal speed game. In this episode, we are going to be fighting pirates. The final pirate battle at Shu. We're actually invading the pirate lair. And after we complete that invasion, we should complete this deed to Invader of Worlds. Be the first to invade seven systems. We've, inv we've invaded six so far. And if we succeed at that first, then we get the reward. Simultaneous War System, which will give us plus two command points uh, on our empire. So we'll, our fleets will be able to be... Two more command points. Right now we have a maximum of 21, looks like. Um, so that's been going up. We had a research completed Sheridan class coordinator. So we're going to do a ship design of that. That's a medium size ship. Um, we're going to be doing that fight. Um, the very first thing I did when I advanced the turn was try to move this scout. It was sitting here at Heracles. With this Craver fleet, uh, they did not attack me, so I, quick like a bunny, scurried off to the east, heading over to Yersh, and I don't know why they did not attack me, but they did not attack me. Um, I was flying a scout down here to Bria to come check out a, um, a ground battle debris type um, a curiosity, but it's, it's disappeared, and I see there's... A, a Craver Scavenger Scout there. So he beat me to it, it would seem. So uh, I'm not going to be able to get that after all, it would seem. So anyway, um, that is most of what's going on. Um, I think I built... Did I build? I guess maybe I did not build uh, Settlers yet. But I think I have some... Yeah, I have some Settlers that I queued up in preparation for getting ready to send them out and just kind of have them standing by in star systems ready to go. Um, okay, so uh, let's let's do this battle first. Let's get that knocked out here. Yeah, he's not able to make it. Okay, ground attack. Here we go. We're down to 686 troops on this fleet. We need to refill. All right. Here we go. It should be an easy fight. We'll take them down using preemptive bombing again, as usual. It's a very strong ground battle tactic. Uh, all right, so we got 10 antimatter, 25 void stones. That's cool. 25 gossamer. All right, cool. So we got it. And there was some sort of curiosity created. Looks like, yep. Ground battle remains. How many total curiosities do we have now? 354. Yeah, we're getting towards the end of exploring the galaxy, so there won't be a whole lot more happening. Uh, but then, you know, as you have battles and stuff like this, you kind of create some more. So they, they still kind of trickle in, after, even after you're done exploring the galaxy. All right, so we have this Overwatch ship. He's going to explore at Doucet, and then I'll come down here to Shu and uh, explore down here as well. I'm going to go ahead and take this fleet... And bring them up here to CE because they're down to 686 troops. And this guy is also at 80 of 120 troops, so I'm going to send him that way too, I think. And since we have more command points now, 
<laughs> now we have 23 instead of 21 because we completed the quest. Okay, great. I'll just merge. I'll merge both of these ships into that fleet. Cool. Be the first to invade seven systems. Nice. We've got a super duper proposal for you. Listen up. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you making. Yeah, we're going to say no. In 20 turns, own the system producing the most industry in the galaxy to get 500 dust and 100 antimatter. Hmm. So that's a competitive quest. Bracia has been established as a colony. And it's located here. Cool, okay. Well, I'll go ahead and get it built out. Um, I'll do most of that off camera. Add populations grow. You can see we have several systems that are maxed out on population. So we're definitely going to have to shuffle some more populations around. We've got some systems that have plenty of room, though. So that's what we're doing. We're just moving them from high population to low population. I was, I was playing around with this earlier, uh, I guess, and I accidentally shifted things out of, out of order. Uh, I was thinking I was going to do agri drugs before I do the coordinator ships. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and design a coordinator, man. So the Sheridan class is a medium-sized coordinator. That is a pretty cool-looking ship. Ooh, I wonder if I do that again, and I, I wonder if I can rotate it while it does that. Cool. All right, so first things first, offense. Um, so this is a coordinator, so it's actually gonna be a defensive ship. Um, so we're gonna go all guns. So we're gonna load as many guns as we can put on it. And then defenses, we're gonna do one armor, and then the rest is gonna be shields. Wow, look at that, 1,400 attack, 19,000 shields. That's pretty nice. 50% damage reduction, uh, kinetic damage. Okay, uh, so that's armor and shields. For our support slots, we're going to put one engine. And <laughs> here we go. Coordinated flak. Yes, very good. The effect counts once per flotilla. And it does the entire flotilla's flak damage is plus 30, like I guess per shot. And the, 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 the flak damage is increased by 30, and the flak rate of fire on the flotilla is doubled, plus 100%. So it's more than double damage. So these guns do uh, flak salvo damage is 150. So that goes up to 180. And the fire rate goes from 3 to 6. Flag damage on squadron per salvo it says 30. So maybe does that make flag damage on squadron go to 60? So it's double damage on squadrons? I'm not really sure. Module multiplier affects flak effectiveness. Spread flak to multiple ships provides most efficient defense. Yeah, so I just put a, I have, I, t I like to have a gun on every ship. Um, and then having a, one of these ships in the flotilla will make the flak super more effective. All right, so this is a coordinator. Um, 
Let's see here. Just call it the flack. <laughs> we could. It's it's a flagship, right? That's I mean that's what it's about. So let's see. Normally they're called a cruiser. How's this thing kitted out? So this is how the computer does it. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of the way the computer does it. Not at all. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to delete the cruiser design. Cool. All right, so I'll probably queue some of those up around. Uh, let's get a feel for... Let's look at a, a system that's already building ships and see how it compares in price so an attacker would cost 670 industry a flak is 1610 and five hyperium so it's roughly triple the cost that's not too bad Okay, we're 93% of the way to unlocking another uh, trade company headquarters. And our trade routes. Let's take a look. There we go. There's our three subsidiaries. So when we build another trade headquarters, which is going to be at AJ, then that will unlock the ability to build one more subsidiary. And I'll put it in at either BG or BF. And then when we build the third headquarters over here at Pollux, um, then we'll uh, build the other trade subsidiary at one of these two. Um, I think that's where they're going to be, is it BF and BG? Uh, we'll see as things play out. And right now, Virtual Artifacts is a, a plus 23. Benthic Gems is plus 21. Void Stones is plus 50. And Red Sang is plus 76. So, going pretty well. It's great. The numbers are gradually getting better. Definitely getting better here. Cool. All right, let's look at these heroes that leveled up. Governor Lagarin. <laughs> Kenit Muldar is already starting to ding. Okay, I can go food and dust, or I can do hot. I think I'm going to do this one because I think it's more. It's She's at CA5. There's 20 population there. So 20 population, every point in here would be 40 points, right? 20 industry and 20 food. So that's 40 points versus a point here would be five per hot on the system and plus five on the system. That would be 30 points. So that's 30 points of industry or 20 food, 20 industry. Hmm. And the number of populations is going to go up. So, hmm. I'm going to take the extra industry. The, uh, the amount of food is already crazy. All right. 30% more food. Uh, 
this is AE where mind matters. I don't know that more food is really going to help that much. I guess, I mean, I, I, I'm shipping the population away. our approval it's okay I could I could do the approval metric we could go with more influence approval I'll take more food um, okay, so right now he's producing an extra 88 food. Sometimes these can be kind of entertaining. Sometimes they're, they're really big impacts. It still says 88 food, so... It's thirty percent more food on system. Maybe we'll see next turn after after the turn is advanced. Okay, we have sell me ships. So we're gonna sell off the last of these sell me ships, and then we're gonna be building just attackers and coordinators. for the sell me ship. All right, I think that's everybody. Um, so yeah, we've got 24,000 dust piled up. Very nice, very nice. And we got several colonies on the way. We have three outposts established, one that's coming next turn, and then we have one in four, one in five. So we're going to keep those colony outposts rolling in. Uh, we are at a minus, oof, it's, it's, it's a starting to rear its ugly head, uh, minus 90 approval from over-colonization. Um, <laughs> yeah. But we have, uh, let's see, how many systems at level 3? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have 9 systems that are ready for upgrade. Um, and all we have to do is, is research these two techs. So those will be ready in 9 turns. So in nine turns, we'll complete these two, then we'll be able to upgrade. The upgrade takes three turns, and then after the they are upgraded, then we have to build autonomous administration, which costs 2240. Um, but the systems that we're talking about could build those in one to two turns. Looks like two turns, probably. So, should be no problem. So we're at nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 turns until we start getting some relief. Um, so we're gonna keep stacking up this Ponzi scheme for 14 turns, um, and then we should get um, 
autonomous administration coming online. Um, assuming, okay, and we need, will need uh, 32, void stones and 32, I believe it is, benthic gems and virtual artifacts. So right now we have enough for about four. Four or five, maybe. Let's see, three times three, eight, 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 maybe. I don't know, eight. So we're going to need to build basically as many as we can. Um, level four upgrades, and I think doing that in a big chunk uh, will take the pressure off on this Ponzi scheme, and we'll be able to slow down on it, and then also. The fact that our Mavericks populations are coming up. I don't think we're going to get to 50 in 15 turns, though. Um, but if we do get to 50, uh, whenever that happens, then we can do the Crack Squad's Law. Um, and that'll cut over expansion disapproval in half. So, like, right now, that, that minus 90 would drop to a minus 45. Um, makes it <laughs> way more manageable, right? And then also... One of the cool things is on the upgrades, we're using benthic gems, and one of the effects that they have is minus 50% on overcolonization penalty. So that would cut it in half, again, on any system that's a level four upgraded. So I think we'll turn the corner here, probably 15 turns, so 70, 80, 77, 88. So by turn 90, we should be on the path towards a much more sustainable way of, of expanding our empire. We should like have a turn to the corner and be kind of hitting our stride and not doing this crazy house of cards Ponzi scheme with approval. Uh, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at on that. Um, let's go ahead and move all our fleets. All of the galaxy. We finally got the pop-up. We've explored 100% of the galaxy. Okay, cool. Great. Ah, this was the last thing, apparently, that I had not seen yet. That's it. <laughs> you see, that's why like, I throw these probes out all over the place in a crazy way. That was, that was still hiding. That was still hidden. All right, cool. All right, well, we've got uh, three curiosities here. We've got an atmospheric one, a life form one, and a subterranean one. And this is in the Kuma system. We have three movement left, so we're going to be trapped here. So if, we, if a pirate comes out, then we are going to be trapped and destroyed. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Yay, it did not. Mutated flora. It's a little bit of influence. 25 influence. Blue cap mold deposit. And a subterranean uh, deposit of adamantium. Cool. for the turn. Okay, this protector <laughs> still cannot upgrade because I messed up the order uh, that I was doing research. So it's not ready yet. If I were to upgrade him, I, I, it is a gun upgrade. Uh, it is an armor upgrade. Uh, it is a shield upgrade.
Yeah, the only thing I'm missing is the extra, um, the extra slots that you get from the uh, Hyperium, the extra Hyperium slots. worth really doing it, so I'm going to just head him down. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, this guy can go to ES. This guy has two movement left, so not very much. He's not going to make it to Genomos this turn. So let's just go ahead and send out probes. Okay, over here at Dill, gonna explore. We have five movement left. There's a subterranean four. Two hundred and fifty influence. Rigel, there is nothing to see here. Move along. Hmm. Anyways, uh, he's guarding over here at Essa. Well, let's go find out what's going on. Okay, um, 72, I think I'm going to wait a turn before I colonize there, because last time I did Karas and Latarka, uh, and I've already got Pollux going, so I think I'm going to wait one turn, and then we'll do, uh, we'll do Lores, we'll do this next time on the uh, odd turn, so he's going to wait. This guy is camped out up here. This guy's out at Turkana. Okay. Four curiosities. He's already damaged. So if, uh, if they're pirates, then he's toast. Okay, life form four. Life form four. Atmospheric one and a subterranean one. So the two life form fours.
Okay, drift buds. A Galvaran population. Irradiated anomaly. With 75 dust and an antimatter deposit. And he's going to Mavros, of course. <laughs> of course he's going to Mavros. This guy has one probe left. I'm just going to send it down this way. Even though I guess we don't really need to because now we know we are 100% explored. And then it's going to fly over to Vega. That one, um, I think, is, is it still says no movement. I think it's because it's doing that, that quest event of uh, Honor the Dead. Um, so let's go ahead and fly this scout from Novaris over to Wrath. And let's see, he has three movement left. Nothing to really see over here. I've already done a good job with the probes. Um, what should I do here? There are no uh, military ships here, so I can safely go here. Uh, what I'm probably going to do... something like that where I go off lane and I'm just kind of scouting I think is what I'm going to do there yeah he has no movement so he's just going to wait and let's see this one in lupus Six movement remaining. We'll bring him down here to Rigel and we'll see. Uh, this should be fine and dandy and safe, but you never know. If something happens to that guy, I've got a backup uh, scout in the area. This guy, he's going to send three probes out just keeping an eye on things. The most high priority things is what he's looking at. We got a scout over here at Aquarius. He arrived from Pegasus. All right, here we go. Two more curiosities. There's a Ruins 2 and a Subterranean 1. Let's get them both. All right, we got an Orcalcyx and a Eden Incense deposit. Oh, I thought it was. No, I guess not. It just influence. Okay. I think that's just about it. Let's look at this. Uh, the remaining movement points. Aha! 
Lumiris did the invasion. And uh, there are ground battle remains. Thank you, girl. Thank you very much. Don't mind if I do. Go ahead and scout those out. 750 dust. Thanks, Lumaris. I'll, uh, I'll be waiting here for the next time. Uh, I'm going to skip past here. Eventually, I, I think the Lumaris should be sending their fleets over here to Grotenev. And then uh, they'll deal with it, and then I'll hop back over and see if I can sneak another portion of their stuff. So my total is at 365 curiosities now. Uh, all ship movement is completed. Let me just double check my notes, see if I've got anything else I need to do. All right, I spot a Kraber ship over here. And it's a, it's an outpost ship. It's a colonization type ship. Yeah, it's not a, uh, not a scout. It's a colonizer. It looks like he's going to try to colonize Zinnius. That's interesting. All right, so that's border pressure. Interesting. Cool. Well, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks, everyone, for watching.